Today we are back in the desert. We are almost finished with this desert village and we are slowly making our way towards the mesa, which has me thinking about terracotta. Currently we are manually collecting it and collecting dyes and crafting all of these beautiful different colors, but I've recently discovered that you can just trade with the stonemason and I'm hoping today we can set up a large trading hall. I'm thinking out here, maybe along these walls. It's going to be outdoors and I'm hoping we can get all the different colors of terracotta. Usually I like to have free range villages to fill the streets with life, but I do have a whole bunch of villages here with no purpose and they're all just crowding the streets. So I think we are going to try locking them away. I've never done a proper trading hall before, so I'm excited to give it a go. And then we're going to have so much terracotta for our future projects. You're watching Bambi Builds and this is episode 45. For our materials today, we'll be using a lot of sandstone because we are in the desert. Maybe some quartz because we actually have a decent amount of that thanks to this guy who is our main stonemason that we've been trading with. And then we're going to need a whole bunch of things to help us with dealing with villagers, maneuvering them around. So that will require a lot of rails and a lot of minecarts. We'll also need some stone so we can craft plenty of stone cutters. Alright, we are ready to get started. Here. Here's our first volunteer. Hopefully, he will give up on trying to be a farmer. We need to add trapdoors here to keep the baby zombies out. Oh, we have another volunteer. villagers are making it very easy. Now we need lots of emeralds so we can start trading. Farmers are always my go-to. And then the iron trade is great as well. We have plenty of traps laid out, ready and waiting for our villagers. Okay, so let's start with these five. Our first trade will be for bricks, which is good because we love pots. Next up, we have chiseled stone blocks polished diorite polished granite okay what do we get oh, magenta terracotta our first color locked in. Brown terracotta. Ooh, glazed gray and red. 
cyan, pink glaze or brown glaze. That's one of my favourites. Quartz, but still just magenta. Okay, buddy, you may be replaced later. But the rest of these guys are looking good. So let's buy some of each colour. Then we'll need to display the different colours somehow. Okay, so this guy sells the glazed grey, which we already have, and the glazed red, which we also already have. So he's officially a waste of space. So we can release him and make way for a new villager. This guy will do. Now I've found a better way of displaying the colours. I want to place the second block here, but I can't because this guy's big head is in the way. So I just need to boop him out of the way. Perfect. I'll boop him back in. Oh yes, that looks cleaner and it's a lot less confusing. So we'll do that all the way along here as well. Trapdoors to keep everyone safe. These are all the colours we still need. Actually, plain terracotta I don't think you can trade for. This next bit is going to take some time, so let's just speed through it. Okay, we are about five hours in, dozens of villagers down, but we finally have our last two villagers with the last two colors. This guy has the green glazed terracotta, and then this guy has the yellow terracotta. So let's see if we can move him over. Perfect. So we don't need this extra green and we have the yellow glazed over here as well. So this guy is officially retired. And now this guy has the green glazed and the cyan. So can we get rid of our current cyan guy? No, I don't think we have this block anywhere else. So we're going to have to make a new spot for this guy. So we will have 19 in total. Alright, we officially have all of the different coloured terracottas, except for plain terracotta, which we'll still have to collect manually. But that took a very long time, but I think it's going to be worth it. So now I'm just going to take some time to make this look a little bit more complete. And then we're going to build a little building here just to fill in this gap. And then I'll meet you back here.
This is all looking a little different, a little more cozy, a little more complete. I really love that we've got this big flat surface up here now so we can build something important here. There's a new little walkway here, which doesn't really have much of a purpose. It just happens to be below a new house that we've got up here. Someone's moved in already. And then we've got a new walkway here connecting up to this old house. And yeah, it just makes this feel a bit more closed in without being the same as over here, the little bamboo ceiling. And then in here, we ended up with a little window to our axolotl sanctuary. And this is just storage. These are all the things that we were trading for with our masons. And then I figured we would store some quartz here as well. So this will be where we get all of our quartz. I didn't really know what to put here, so that is empty for now. But this is looking so good. And let's trade. So say we want blue terracotta. Grab that, and then we can walk up these stairs to get the rest of the XP. So we can just walk along here, which is why we've got the stairs there. And then, of course, we still store all the colored terracotta over here. So it's nice and easy to grab when we need it. And now the only one we don't have sorted is the plain terracotta. We still have to dig that manually. Or maybe we could create some of our own now that we have a mud farm. So if we were to place dripstone under this layer of stone bricks, we could get that entire bottom row to be a block of clay. So maybe we have some stairs going down here. Okay, that's actually all the dripstone we have, so we might want to grow some more. I don't know exactly how that works, but this is how I usually do it. So we have a 7x9 block cube of mud sitting above this dripstone. So we're going to keep growing dripstone and fill in all of these blocks. And then up here, hopefully, oh yes, the mud is starting to dry out on this entire bottom layer. So then we can smelt that to make terracotta. And then we just need to make this look a little bit prettier. looking now. I've got almost three rows of dripstone which we are growing down here and it is taking a very long time. It's been about three hours already so I think this is going to be an ongoing project for a while. 
And then I had the incredible idea of having a little wheat farm down here because it looks like it's all being watered from above. I think that's super cute. And we use that wheat for our packed mud. And then here's our mud. So you can see the first few rows where we have our dripstone. It's all starting to dry out. And eventually we'll have this entire floor space covered with dripstone so we can get heaps of clay. We just throw the clay into the furnace and we get terracotta. So now our mud farm is also a terracotta farm. Now while we are on the subject of terracotta, I did have a bit of a crazy idea but I thought I'd check with you guys first before I do it. I was thinking about extending the mesa all the way along here. I don't know if that's going to look good or if we should instead have this all square with houses on it or if we should have a bunch of pyramids here or should we turn it into the mesa, kind of like our little axolotl sanctuary here. Please let me know what you would prefer. Because I just am not sure. Now let's take one last look at what we built today. Our villager trading hall. All the different colours of terracotta. Tiny bit of storage space in here. A new house. A new staircase. A whole bunch of masons because we went through quite a lot. And we still store all of our terracotta here and here. And it did occur to me that this little building would make the perfect trading hall, but we already have a use for it and I kind of like it. Yeah, I still love our farmland. It does look super cute from above. Oh, also since I updated my game, the spacing of these Unicode squares has changed a little bit. It's kind of ruined a bunch of my signs. Like see this E here? Originally they were all lined up perfectly on the left. Hmm. We are done for today. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of Bambi Builds. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to meet you back here next time.